Okay, we've started recording. Uh, so welcome to the community call on the 23rd of April 2024. Uh, I'm going to be chairing um, through advanced technology. Uh, and um, if you are new here, the first thing that we do is uh, we just make introductions. Um, so I think we have at least one person who I've never seen introduce themselves. So uh, Miguel, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself, I don't want to put you on the spot. The right answer might also be I'm a bit shy, I'd rather not. So it's up to you. Don't worry. Okay, I'm, I'm not shy, but uh, my name is Miguel. And today I'm a professor, a new professor on the on the college here in my city. I have a formation in uh, college degrees, like a systems information or information systems translating to English and also data science but it's associate so I'm from the area but I'm starting to to getting back to programming so I had no such experience programming it's not I, I didn't like it so much but I'm starting to come back and it never makes sense for me to learn another language, programming language to make the same stuff. Like, and I, I love Python much better than the other language. So it's also, uh, I, I, question, I question it myself about why it doesn't have Python for front end? Because it has uh, JavaScript and another technologies, another language. So I, I think your, your project, it's great. And I, I would like to be part of it. Great stuff. Well, you're very, very welcome here. We're, we're a friendly bunch. It's a little bit strange, um, but only in a good way. Uh, and so, yeah, you're in the right place. Discord is kind of where it all happens. Um, and so, welcome. Um, uh, the next thing we do is announcements. Um, there's only one announcement, um, and that's from me. Um, and that is, uh, this week, it's Docs Week. Um, uh, Andrea sadly um, cannot uh, make this uh, call, uh, but he's been on fire, uh, and I've been working with him to get a whole bunch of docs done. Uh, better than Shark Week, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you see, I told you we were a bit strange. Uh, and <laughs> um, so, get involved. I noticed from. Um, Lukash's uh, grumpy poll assorted complaints section later on. There are some aspects of the documentation there, so I'm more that you know, put issues in, or, or you know, we can we can triage stuff and, and, and fix it up and things like that. Um, but uh, our docs are only as good as the people who write them, and that's mostly me at the moment. So they're not that great. Andrea's helping as well. Um, please get get involved. So that's the announcements done. Um, I kind of feel like every week's Docs Weeks, but, you know, this week especially is Docs Weeks. Um, so we next have agenda items. Um, again, because I was the guy who put together this doc to begin with, so I got first dibs on the bullet points. So sorry, I'm always first in these lists. Um, so I've only put one agenda item in, and that is uh, a proposal or fair warning that uh, the 2024.4.2 release should be coming out soon. Um, why do we need that? Uh, well, um, uh, I found a bug in uh, archive-related, um, so zip and tar zip, uh, tar gun zip um, handling in MicroPython, um, and so uh, Andreas fixed that. Um, also, uh, Fabio's work, excellent work on PyDOM and PyWeb, uh, now is optional for MicroPython, and so Andreas. By fixing that bug, he's taking the first step in allowing us to perhaps compartmentalize our standard library so you only get what you want, as it were. Uh, and also in that line of work as well, um, PolyScript now has the um, lazy loading of Python modules. So you can call from within Python, you know, uh, I, I, I want to, you can call asynchronously get bring me this thing from PyPI and um, bring it into my um, context as it were uh, so again that's that's more uh, of that kind of modularizing grabbing things on the fly um, so if if there are any complaints or problems please let me know is what I'm saying um, 
uh, other, one, other than that, if I don't hear anything by Thursday, so in 48 hours time or two days time, Euro time, Thursday morning, I will cut a new release and, uh, and off we go. Um, um, so, uh, Nicholas, I was working, well, not really. I found another <laughs> couple of issues with MicroPython that I need to get in. Yeah. Um, I love and, it. Uh, I was working, but not really. <laughs> that that needs to go on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I was working on the PyWeb branch. Yeah. And then I was like, no, not really. I was working on another thing. <laughs> but anyway, um, I found another couple of things that I think might be the reasons related to additional reasons MicroPython doesn't work well. Right. So I'll, I'll get that in. It should be a couple of liners so i i'll get that in today um this is pi web but and if Pi-Dom you don't see stuff. yes yeah yeah, yeah. Pi, python stuff which is already was already merged like yeah before. it's not related to the new work yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. so anyway i in theory i have time today etc cetera, etc cetera. if you don't see anything just keep that in mind because probably my day went to hell yeah 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 don't I worry i can push it to friday or whatever it, there's no urgency in this but you know it'd be nice to get a release out because as we know we'd like people to get used to uh you know pi script release regularly release often you know it's not a frightening thing we can do it on a friday afternoon and it'll just work and all of that sort of stuff so that uh so that we're, we're good with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you've put it in the notes, so I won't miss it. Um, so that's it from me. Um, and then uh, this is probably the best agenda item I've seen since being involved in PyScript, which is the Grumpy Poll assorted complaints. So, uh, <laughs> Lukash, really let it out. Go on, just, you know. <laughs> Hi, uh, let me share the screen for a second, uh, just so that we have, like, context. Uh, since uh, I, I think um, for feedback to be effective, you, you have to first kind of build some trust. So let me build some trust for a second and yeah. then I'll let it all out. You have a um, lot of trust already. You don't yeah, need yeah, to build yeah, any yeah. trust. Okay. But context so is go, great. Go live. Yeah. Uh, so I had a talk on a small um, conference um, over the weekend uh, where I'm actually diving into WebGL with uh, PyScript like way more than I did at EuroPython. This is sort of uh, like a preview of the talk that I'm going to be doing at, uh, at PyCon. So um, this already works, right? So all of this, I was able not only to make work with PyScript at this point with uh, workers and with async and, and with terminals for stuff like both with um, with raw WebGL, which nobody wants to do, and with 3JS, which is what you're looking for, right? Uh, uh, looking at right now. Like I love this example not just because it's the logo, but because it's lit by mm. the actual sun. Like the real sun is lighting up the scene here because um, what you have here is um, like a 360 photo that is HDR. So the actual luminance of the sun is a, a light source. So this actually kind of checks out, which I, I guess it's amazing. Like, I don't know, like for, for, for me, it's pretty cool. So anyway, that works, right? So this is nice. And uh, the code for this um, lives in uh, on PyScript.com. This is where I moved all examples so that I could actually share something with people at the conference since uh, people were like, hey, can we have um, the slides? And I was like, no, because they're over a gig big now because, you know, uh, there's videos on, in them, like in, in a ton of them. Uh, so, you know, um, I moved all the examples there so we can actually run them. Um, and now I can just stop sharing because, you know, like you can actually go to my account on bicycle.com and see all those examples yourself. But um, we get to the actual... Uh, kind of experience from using passthrough.com. So first of all, like, it's nice. It does work. It's uh, it's pretty cool that I could put everything there. Uh, but it's got, like, some kind of low-hanging fruit that, like, made using it kind of weird. And, like, I hope, like, that easily we can tweak them such that, you know, uh, it's, it's actually going to be more effective as a platform for people to actually code. Like, my most frustrating thing that I just have to let you know about is that um, if you have VS Code in the browser and you have all of those things that you do in the editor, all kind of um, shortcuts work as you would expect. 
and almost also in PyScript.com. Like you do command uh, S and it saves the file. But if you do command W, it doesn't close the file you had open. It closes, it closes the, the entire tab. tab. Yeah. <laughs> which I if you see that. Which start, which starts like for a minute or whatever. Like it is extremely frustrating, and I don't know how many times I did this when I was preparing the talk. So like there were like many minutes lost to this. So <laughs> you were, like you would have to see me. Yeah. So, so shift command T should get the tab back into its oh, previous sh sure yeah, sure. yeah just sure, letting you know that just in case you didn't know also just so you know fabio the other fabio on here fabio rosado is part of the piescoop.com team so he's uh yeah i'm taking notes he's taking notes <laughs> so just let it all hang out yeah, yeah because like vs code is already doing this right yeah. uh like and obviously you can reopen the tab but as i said like if you're using pyodide where the example starts up for a long while yeah, like yeah. it is like it's just w pain in the neck wasting everybody's time yeah um yeah. And yeah, and for me actually showing PyScript.com, which I am in the talk, one thing that I couldn't really do is uh, change the font size on, on just the editor. I could just do like comment plus to make everything blow up, but then everything blows up. And this is not what I wanted because it also blows up the example. Yeah. So because I that's in the same window. So yeah. just, just to be able to control that would be amazing because on slides you want the um, kind of the mm, font to be a little bigger than usual. Yeah. Um, the thing that saved me this time was that uh, this was an online conference, so everybody was looking at, at video anyway. So I could just like say, well, too bad. I'm just going to use what I have. But I cannot show the same slides uh, at PyCon because everybody's going to be like, you know, what is this? This is uh, absolutely not legible. So I'm going to have to bump the, the code size. And I, I can obviously just prepare slides that I have nothing to do with PyScript.com, but I just think that it is more immersive for me to show yeah. what people are going to see when they are opening the site. And it's also good for you because it's like, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah. from your perspective, it's free advertising. So like, you know, okay, the, help me uh, help you with, uh, with the font size. It's, it's, it should be uh, simple. And like, speaking of advertising, like some of the examples are broken at this point and they have been broken for a while. Yeah. Okay, before we move, sorry, um, just to clarify on the, the previous topic, what would be your ideal user experience for font size? What would you like as oh, a, how would you like to so the, be able to do it? Some sort of config where I can choose this. Uh, like, so obviously, for example, like there's also no way for me to, to um, actively choose whether I want the bright or the dark side, the thing, like, which is fine because you can just go and uh, just change whatever your, uh, whatever your browser is doing. And that is okay. But like, if you have like just settings there, like it would be amazing if I could just, you know, kind of just have like a slider or just even like just type in the po point value or whatever mm -hmm. uh, for this to work. Like now that I'm thinking it's all browser, so I could po possibly just go to the inspector and just blow it out, blow yeah. it out like that, like this. But it's it's sort of hacky. And then if I did control W, like that would go Yeah, on, yeah, so. it would all reset it back, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, we are setting the font size, so that should be easy. So would you be happy to have like a icon that allows you to change the font size to like from minus to plus kind of thing? So then, yeah, would that, that be, would be perfect. Thing? Yes, okay. yeah, exactly. Like so, like, yeah, yes, uh, yeah. Like so, whatever the UX is, if it's possible, I'm gonna be already happy with that because like it's it's not like a terrible complaint. Only like you know, it's uh it's gonna come up when I'm actually preparing the the version of the talk to give live at PyCon. Yeah, so um, take GL. Uh, yeah. So you, we're, you've been talking about editor uh, yes. style, right? Not the full uh, website. The full website, you can, you can actually control with the browser, right? Like, you yeah, know, right, do right. And we, there's and also on the full website, there, there, there's a toggle dark or, or light theme as well. Um, so that should be for the whole site. But I think you're talking about the editor. That's, that's just... PyScriptGitHub.com. Uh, is, is there a toggle for PyScript.com and not .net? Yeah, yeah. When you are on PyScript.com, if you click on your profile uh, image, you will see the fourth. Oh, OK. That works. Yeah, OK. So I, I, I didn't notice this one that I actually can click there and do stuff. Uh, but OK, like yeah. that's, that's on me. Um, 
No, but but I do, I do still do think I I what I'm hearing honestly is that the need is for a ri rich at to some extent uh, configuration for the editor. Like in the editor, yeah, I want to like, like, you know. It's it's great that it's already like a you know kind of you know a convention over configuration sort of experiences like you you, you get it it's pre-configured for you like in sensible defaults and, and that's fine only like mm -hmm. you know this uh, sort of font size is one of those customizations that like I don't think we can actually get away without like uh, that yeah yeah I totally agree I totally agree for for an editor like we we need to have this uh, right and then. DeckGL, it's an awesome example. I don't know who actually came up with this example like on the Anaconda side, but like it's it's amazing. However, it's amazing when you make it work, right? And it doesn't work now for a few reasons. So reason one is that like it's just broken because some dependencies on the PyPI side moved on and now there is no uh, wheel that is um, like pure Python for some dependencies. So right. you can pin one of the dependencies and then like stuff starts working again. So um, my idea on the actual issue for this was that maybe the example should always pin in dependencies because yes. those things are going to be moving forward and yeah. it's going to be just annoying for you to keep track with their stuff still works. And it's kind of like, you know, for for me, it's uh, it's important for the examples to work because like if some of the examples are just like you know are not working for you it kind of it uh raises questions like you know like is this ready like yeah. and it's not actually PyScript's issue it's not something that like doesn't work on your end it's simply packaging you know packaging yeah. it's it's constant struggle yeah um i've the the guy yeah. who's and responsible then, mm -hmm. for those examples i've put a to-do item for madur who's who's the guy who spent a lot of time making sure those examples work so i'll, I'll ping him um because uh, you know we want all these examples working for pycon for a start so i really appreciate you actually bringing this up because um you know uh it's important that we don't have egg on our face yeah so uh like what one one issue with the example too is that it is using uh probably madur's like personal api key for mapbox and that must have just like, you know, reached the quota of the request that he could actually do with the API yeah. sometime in the past. So the map didn't even show up. And I had to actually go through like this entire thing, like what is even Mapbox? Like, where do I put the API key? What do I do with this so that it works? And yeah. when I did, like, it actually looks amazing. It's like the most kind of, you know, kind of mature example of like, you know, wow, like it's, there's a map, there's a, you know, a graph like laid on the map. It's amazing, but you know, just, from this default of like, oh, here's my API key is going to be fine. Like just two sentences in the readme saying like, hey, like you you should clone this and just put your own API key because yeah. like, you know, unless Anaconda just buys like, you know, a, a, a kind of a commercial API key, but somebody's going to just take it from you because it's just Yeah, it's there. in the plain text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you probably don't want this. Yeah. Um, right. And then my personal kind of thing that I actually hit uh, when I was working on the Python example was that um, I, I don't know what the kind of per project quota on PyScript.com is, but there is a per attachment quota where an attachment can mm -hmm. have only one megabyte, uh, which sounds like it's a, a lot, but when you're throwing HDR photos on it, like a megabyte is actually very little. Yeah. So. Um, like, so I had to struggle a bit to actually make it fit and it did, it doesn't look awesome, but like, you know, it's an example, so it's great. But if uh, if we could actually have some like, you know, information on what the uh, things are before I hit it, like I would be prepared, right? And for me personally, maybe we can, you know, somehow um, raise the limits for me for PyCon so that I can actually make examples that look better. Let me but talk you know, with Martin. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say. If Martin was in the call, he would be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, no, but I, so, jokes aside, yeah, let me, let, I'll reach out in private and I can help you with that. Yeah, so, and, and, and I even thought like, oh, this is probably where the paid thing comes in. So, okay, let me click the link and you click the link and it does nothing. You cannot actually become a founder at this point unless it just doesn't work for me. And any case like if the founder thing is not ready yet like it's weird that it's there because people will try to click it and if it doesn't do anything it just looks bad uh and if it should be working well then i have a bug report because it doesn't for me 
Um, yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. That was a that was an initial offering for at the beginning of the, um, the launch uh, with the intent that we would start offering uh, basically paid tiers for like things like oh, I want more than one megabyte of quota and uh, yeah, those exactly. type of things. Um, I just basically we are a little behind on that, so I I think we need to provide a way for people to do stuff as you said so uh i think so i need to I, talk with martin about this but yeah, for, i think for, um, we can fix for sure also from our perspective that was working because you're the first one that mentioned that that's not currently working yeah okay because so i have implemented the payments uh the initial payments and yeah we we probably need to improve our end-to-end -end tests to double check if something is not acting up as they should Right, I uh, I mostly use Firefox, so maybe it's just this is one of the things where it's only tested in Chrome. I don't know. Uh, I, I did Firefox switch between well. Chrome and Firefox, yeah, yeah, because Chrome has better WebGL support. So I did cross-check the things, um, and you know, it, it didn't seem to work for, uh, for me like on either either side. But like you know, if uh, if there's something I should be doing, like that's also fine. Only like we need to tweak it so that. It's ob it's more obvious for people that they can just leave money with you, right? Like that that should be smooth, yeah. um, right? And then uh, lastly, like I actually kind of uh, migrated everything to PyScript twenty twenty four four one, but uh, when you create a new uh, a new project on PyScript dot com, it still uses PyScript like three something, right? So twenty twenty four three something. So when does that change? It changes when um, I think they usually give it about a week and it's done on an ad hoc mm -hmm. basis. But I think what you'll see in Discord, in chat or announcements, Martin or someone associated with .com will say, OK, default template now uses PyScript version, whatever the next the next version is. Um, but they, they usually leave it a few days because, well, you know what releases are like. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was pairing with Martin on this yesterday. Actually, that's a good question to run by y'all. We're discussing around the, the we were discussing the fact that PyScript.com should encourage you to do best practices and standard of things. And one of them is that if you have UI or complex UI, you should probably spin up bootstrap your UI with MicroPython. And if you want to use PyDide to have another the logic with PyDide. So we're debating whether to do that in the template already. So pre set your uh, project with that uh, standard or just leave as it is. Um, and mostly because switching to MicroPython would speed up a lot of things. But at the same time, would probably be confusing for folks just wanting to use Python uh, because of a bunch of libraries and you know the package that they would install stuff wouldn't wouldn't work out of the box. So, thoughts or preferences? Well, I, I have a question for Lukash, I... actually. Yeah. Um, if I understand, I mean, I've not seen your talk yet. I'm looking forward to it greatly. Um, but if I understand it, you're doing all your GL. Uh, WebGL manipulation through a third-party JavaScript library. So and... I do start with just talking about how WebGL works, like in yeah. general. Then we do uh, write some raw examples with just PyScript with no JavaScript libraries. But this is like an extremely low-level API, right? Because yeah. WebGL is not even a 3D framework. It's yeah. it's literally just a rasterization library. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. like we put pixels on the screen. So you don't want to do like this level of computation. So then we move to 3JS. I show a bunch of things, and then I actually show the um, the GL example because it's like, hey, and if you're not interested in like games and whatever and interactive experiences, but you just want to like link some data to some visualization, like that's probably what you want because also uh, this is using all Python dependencies. So they have Python docs and not JavaScript docs. Yeah. Whereas 3JS is a JS library. Right, because if it's just a JavaScript library, you should be able to manipulate it, not you know, from MicroPython. Um, maybe actually, is there any better way to use the JS modules from PyScript than just shoving them into global this? Uh, there is. Uh, I'll 
share that with you when we get to that point. But I, I'm just intrigued, if, you know, if you could make your stuff work with MicroPython so you don't have the kind of the cost of waiting three seconds for PyDi to start up. So um, I was I was honestly waiting with my uh, MicroPython like for for the terminal stuff and for like, you know, all the other things that I uh, I was hearing that like this is coming. It's not uh, yeah, quite yeah, it's arrived yet. now. Yeah. And 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 then and then I don't quite understand like or what's the deal with MicroPython with proxies, which I understand with Pyodide and how to do them. Because mm. like other other than that, like I already switched from using from JS import document to from PyScript import document so that it's cross platform between MicroPython yeah. and, 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 and uh, Pyodide. But uh, I don't know what's gonna happen with the proxy. So like, you know, I was just essentially just giving this time but mostly i also just want to have like a trivial answer to people that are like hey can you import numpy and i want to just say yes yeah 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 this is how i thought that it. might so be yeah yeah micro yeah, exactly. python yeah i, I thought that yeah. might be the case My, we, we we sorry go for it the, the 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 lags that annoying amount of time where we start talking of each other you go yeah. first you go first right so so um in general MicroPython does look better for this sort of thing that I was showing, like on the talk, say for the uh, GL, um, and you know having some sort of clarity on this in in the docs and more examples on the PyScript.com site, like that will definitely be helpful. Yeah. But I I would at this point I cannot really answer you like whether defaulting to my MicroPython would be better for me or not. Uh, I think PyOdite is actually a good starting point. It's it is, not yeah. the most performant, which it's which is annoying, sure. But um, and we can still like have like a a, a little thing that I forgot to mention with the DeckGL example about this. Um, but um, I do think that it's less annoying when something is so slow to start rather than it's partially functional, right? Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. Cool. Thanks for the context. Just so that you know, we've moved some of the FFI stuff uh, into the PyScript namespace um, because what Damien's been trying to do is mirror, you know, the the, the the awesome work that HUD has been doing all these years. Um, but, you know, MicroPython and PyDide are different beasts and they necessarily need different solutions for whatever but what we've tried to do is kind of raise the abstraction a little bit so from pyscript dot ffi import whatever it is there's just a couple of things there's a create proxy and 2js is uh, is what you is what you currently get uh, but it's that first step of just making it easy to you know flip between the two because you're not the only one who says oh wouldn't it be great if i could just put mpy instead of just py in the script tag when you put the type in it, it just it just works but um yeah cool that's well, it. Well, then, honestly mm -hmm. yeah go ahead probably no i was just going to say part of this it, it's actually great feedback given yeah. the documentation week this week right like this is really gold for us to be able to work yeah. better on docs yeah. yeah actually if you don't mind Lukash, like uh, being a guinea pig on just checking the changes on the docs to see if they make sure. sense. That, yeah. that would be amazing. Well volunteered, Lukash. <laughs> yeah, not a problem at all. Um, right, like so speaking of Pyodite versus MicroPython, like really the only problem for me like is the fact that it starts slow. And the uh, only problem with that really is when it starts and we have no feedback why it starts uh, for a long time. Like uh, what, last year when I started with the old style PyScript with the alpha version, whatever, when Pyodite and stuff was loading, like all of this information was like, you know, kind of mm, cropping up was showing like on the kind of initialization screens. Like these days, like on the PyScript.com examples, this is kind of, hidden behind just like a generic loading message. So you don't really know what's going on. And in particular, I had this kind of problem that I, I don't want us to debug right now. I'm just saying like um, that there are, there seem to be a few kind of uh, moments that take a long time. Yeah. And one of those moments is the actual before Pi ready, right? So, okay, like this is where the loading screen is showing, like you see loading, it's fine, but because PyReady was not called yet. And then PyReady is called, and for the DeckGL example, for like 10 seconds, nothing is happening. And I was trying to just put some sort of 
like dumb manipulation that I could just like put some message or model, or whatever, like just in the Python script that is there, already saying like, oh, probably they're just loading some CSV files. I don't, I don't know. Like, right? So like put some of those things there just so that you could see anything, like any progress before it actually loads for you. But it turns out that this sort of thing happens before the first import. Like it was like a long kind of wait for a moment between my code and PyReady that I couldn't quite debug, like, you know, like I, I didn't spend too much time on this. Okay. So I wasn't really sure like why th this would take so much time. All the other examples, they're relatively shorter. Like you can, you can see like, you know, kind of uh, where they, where, you know, where, where they spend time. Yeah. And, and this particular one didn't. And I feel like it is less of a problem, like the wall clock time. It's more of a problem where you don't know if this is going to progress or not, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Miguel. then, yeah. Like sorry. Mm -hmm. sorry. Sorry, Miguel. So I, I need to go right now. I need to pick up my wife on, the, okay. on her job. Uh, and right. when here's our dinner time, not dinner, but lunch time. So I need to go. Okay. And I don't know where are you? in Europe or in US, but okay. And I'll be together with you learning and dealing with that. Yes. And I can help uh, whatever I can. I don't have a professional experience on, on, on the programming, but I could help with documents and whatever I, I want and I want to help. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Awesome. That's Miguel, where are you based? I'm from Brazil. I'm in a city in in the state of São Paulo called ba Barretos. Hey, go on, Fabio. Eu sabia, por isso que eu perguntei. Eu sabia, por isso que eu perguntei. Tá, dá ah, para ouvir você... o sotaque. Ah, o sotaque, você é brasileiro. Ok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll let you go. Just wanted to confirm that. <laughs> ok. Awesome. Tchau, tchau. Bye, bye. Tchau. Oh, well, there we go. Brazilians of PyCon. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a secret yeah, club going on. Party. <laughs> okay, sorry, Lukas, you were you were in the middle of saying something. I just noticed he had his hand up, I, I, and I, I was, wanted to make sure he was. I, I, I was talking about like the kind of me trying to debug things and and really not being able to, which actually brings me to the fact that like very early on when I saw like oh there's a terminal now and there's workers so you can actually have input so. I just import a PDB and I was like, you can do stuff. Like yeah. this is amazing, and you can and you can and you can step over things, but um, you cannot look at source code. Like any backtrace just shows you like garbage. And you know, if you actually want to see like which line I'm on, you're always on the first line on of some exec. So like this, this actually kind of re, you know uh, removes essentially like the you know kind of the I don't know like the the mm, the surface that that you're walking on when you're debugging like you want to know like where in your program are you stopped right now and you cannot see this because there's some magic happening with exec uh, there and if you're using pyodite directly with no pyscript and whatnot like that works you can actually see you know kind of when you're pdbing like you know oh like this is the line so it must be something that happens like you know kind of on on polyscript i don't know actually but just the feedback like if you're doing Import PDB, PDB set trace. Yeah, you should be able to do LL and see which line you're on. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I right? think Since, the issue is uh -huh. upstream, to be honest. Um, okay. Yeah, but we need to we need to double check because um, also we struggle not only on PDB. Like oftentimes, depending on the condition, even just normal tracebacks are are very uh, just broken as you said like no line error errors or the, the lines are off and things like this um there is a difference between when you run part of it is when we provide files versus inline code as well that is off and i know for sure but i i think in general upstream there there are issues that we need to talk mm -hmm. with the pyodide and probably micropython folks yeah in this case, we are providing files. It's it's worker terminal. Uh, it's a script worker terminal with a file provided. Uh, like for this, if that does work, this is going to be a, a a tool that people I expect are going to be using a lot mm. because compared to regular Python development on the 
on, on your computer, you cannot really easily look into third party libraries and see what code they're actually running. And here, like if you can PDB through them, through the things that you pip installed with micro pip, like, you know, with Iodite, like it's gonna be useful to see like why something behaved weirdly. So like for, for me, that would already explain a, a, a few kind of things that I, I actually have to otherwise print debug, which wasn't terrible, but it would be way nicer if I could yeah. just, you know, use PDB as, as I do usually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in particular, there, I tried to like, maybe, oh, like I'm going to set up some debug script that is in the main thread and just leave my worker and let them talk to one another somehow. And I couldn't figure out how to do this. And the, the worker documentation so far is like very short. It doesn't really have like a, uh, kind of, um, nice example there for this. And, you know, I, I actually, first things that it says, like, oh, we're using Atomic. So I went like to MDN and started reading, like, what is this doing? But like, this wasn't immediately actually letting me do anything more with PyScript because it was like kind of like a technical detail for yeah. maybe if you're more advanced, like if you care about this maybe later on. But when I actually jumped into that rabbit hole, like I spent some time on this, but in the end I was like, I don't know what I can actually do with this now. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Lukash, yeah, like, I must apologize. Mm -hmm. I wrote that sentence that said uh, we're using <laughs> Atomics, so I I feel so, oh, really bad. Do, do, uh, <laughs> no, don't do, do, don't worry about this. Like all, all that's already there. Like is is great that it's there. Like you know, we're just you know kind of yeah. building on experiences that like people have like when they first try to do something. Yeah, yeah, right? So yeah. like in six months, I'm I'm not gonna have those experiences anymore. Since like you know, I'm gonna be like figuring stuff more and more so maybe it's kind of valuable right now what we're doing that like i'm still kind of like an outsider to icecrew.com and like do all the recent changes to me the, the worker stuff is still recent because until recently i couldn't really switch to it uh i only did that for the talks because i i, I didn't want to like actually show examples that are outdated yeah in fact that's like one of the small kind of points of the talk to say like hey you just want to do the new thing it's much better um, um, yeah, and that brings me but, like, I, yeah, okay. No, I was, I was just going to say, look, this is really great, super valuable because yeah. it, it is feedback that is very direct and we can action on them really, you know, easily. Uh, I mean, like, like we know each other, right? So it's not yeah. like this is going to yeah. land on YouTube and everybody's going to be able to watch my complaints forever from now on, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, Either way, if it was up on YouTube or not, we know each other. We know your intentions are <laughs> definitely like in the, the best okay. of hearts. I, I um, imagine there's but... going to be a section of his talk at PyCon where he's going to take the last 30 seconds and uh, just play it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nice. But um, the other aspect, too, is now that I, I, I we know that you're, um, you have this and on your feedback, there are stuff that we're designing that I, I'd love to have more feedback from the community, but it's just hard because the community is, you know, the community at large. But things like, you know, your development process, like one of the specific things I'm looking at uh, GitHub integrations, for instance, right? Like how would that be in the experience, a developer experience uh, in, on your editor or, or in your terminal, things like this, or I find the flow that we have right now on patchgroup.com not optimal yet between saving files, running the, the, the preview or, um, you know, opening another thing like that type of conversation is very useful. So any feedback that you have, just throw it. Yeah, right. Uh, so so for, for this in particular, very late on, I discovered that there's versions on in particular patchgroup.com projects, which is useful. So so yeah, like, um, Kind of that already made me think like, oh, could, can I actually diff between the versions to see like what I changed? And so far we can't. So like that kind of brings us to like, yeah, actually sort of real source control there. Like at some point it will be nice to have because, you know, kind of um, it is very easy, especially when you're a beginner um, to just end up with a situation where like, oh, it worked two seconds ago, but I did something and it no longer works. But like. I just I just saved the file, so like I cannot go back now. Like there's no really smart undo. Like it does still remember if you didn't close the entire tab. Like sure, uh, you can still like maybe Control Z and you know save yourself there, which I did a few times. But a few times I was really like, 
Uh, I painted myself into some corner. I don't know what I did. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like version control, which I'm otherwise used to, like would be nice at some point. But I understand that this is like all kind of evolving. So you know, kind of already, I was able to move everything to PyScript.com just so that it's much easier for me to just point at this during a talk, saying like, you can see all the examples there. You know, kind of don't worry about actually quickly, you know, uh, typing and, you know, writing down like all the code that you're seeing and trying to understand every every single line. It's it's not the point of the talk. I cannot explain everything in 30 minutes. It's impossible. So relax, right? Like everything is on PyScript.com, which is better even than saying everything is on GitHub.com because literally the, 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 the big run button is like right next to it. So it's like, you know, like I, I think this is very useful. This this is doing like what, what we want for uh, those sort of like flashy graphical examples. Um, yeah, and like other than this, I, I, I just have like a bunch of just questions like the one about like, how do you actually do like JS modules? And I like, you know, oh, I actually have a callback. I know about those and I know about pre proxy, but there are some async callbacks as well in JavaScript. And I don't know how, if we actually can use them because I tried and it didn't work. And so, you know, kind of the, the, there's a bunch of like concrete, you know, things that I don't think the video is the best actual, like, well, the, the call right now is the is the best uh, venue to, 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 to solve my particular questions. But um, I do feel like there's going to be a need for, I don't know where this actually goes, like for documentation that is simply like, I don't know, um, the browser for Python programmers, mm. where all of those things that are not really specific to PyScript, but also they're not specific to Python and they're not specific to JavaScript, they're specific to this combination. They're going to have to be explained to like, yeah. you know, uh, this is how you're supposed to live with the fact that, you know, JavaScript is FFI for us really, right? So you're going to have to call dot new and to actually explain to a Python programmer why you actually have to say this, yeah. why you cannot just um, hide new and just have like a, you know, pseudo constructor that is like just nice. Like, why is that different? Like, I, I had this conversation like with Hood uh, at EuroPython, and I guess uh, he mm, convinced me then, like, oh, okay, like if in JavaScript you have two notations and, you know, they do something else, then you cannot hide this in Python because you have to have access to both notations and so on and so on. But a lot of those questions that I'm having right now, like, yeah, it's it, you're really in uncharted territory because yeah. there's there's no great start stack overflow content on this yet. Yes. Yeah, it's the chicken and egg type situation, you know, which which comes exactly. first. Yeah. Um I've just pasted into chat and I can DM you later. There's uh um how do you use JavaScript modules other than global this? Um that was some docs that landed last month that I wrote up um about uh you know the options that you have for using javascript libraries um oh, yeah. uh so that should that hopefully that's hopeful helpful um yeah uh oh man we have just so much to explain um <laughs> uh, and often oh, it's yeah. not it's not us who has to explain you know it's decisions that we've not made like hood made that decision four years ago to do blah 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 with the ffi with the dot new because at that point in time, you know, so, um, yeah, it, it is that spread of the uh, stack overflow thing that, that, that we kind of need, really. Um, yeah, but I think this is a great opportunity, to be honest. Like, we... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, being, definitely. Being front, yeah, being the front end for all of that, right, gives us, puts us in a great position to try and work and tell that story to use the final users, right? Like, and... and I'd love for us to do something very sim simple that is un understandable and you can actually, if you're a new person going into Python, it's easy for you to understand as well. And then the, the projects upstream, it's, uh, that they could use the same resource to explain why they do the, what they do, right? Like I think as a community, that's a topic that I think I, we should iterate like last year we did. There are those areas where we can collaborate a little more and provide a better value to the community uh, as people developing stuff on Wasm. Um, so this is good. This is great, yeah. really great. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, honestly, this isn't grumpy poll assorted complaints. This is like gold dust feedback. Honestly, it's uh, 
Although yeah. I, I hope to see Grumpy Paul as your kind of description on your PyCon badge. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm happy you're, um, you're treating this constructively because I do intend to use this more. Um, like it, it shapes up to be actually, you know, really useful. So um, it looks great. Um, yeah, like I, I was just sharing my experience kind of as it was uh, as an update through things that I did last year, like which PySwift.com is like leaps better from what I had to do before where yeah. like, you know, you have to understand like all those weird headers that you have to set up in your HTTP server so that you can locally even start the thing and your browser doesn't reject, yeah. you know, actually allowing you to, to, to start scripts and stuff, uh, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So PySwift.com is like, for me, like the ideal thing to point people at because I don't have to explain this in a talk, right? So obviously that could, come later on, like you do have to explain to people, for example, how do you even do like an offline application with Pyodite, which like for now is like, I gave up. Like I actually try, try to like at least make this because I'm like, I wanna show something maybe live. I'm not gonna, but like, I was like, maybe I'm gonna be showing something live at the conference. So I don't want to actually depend on uh, the networking like at PyCon. So I try to like actually do like all this, oh, you need to bring all those pip installable things locally and whatnot. It is um it is pretty kind of uh, it is pretty involved so far, right? So um the just using passwe.com for now and just pointing people at it like yeah, like that's way easier. That's preferred. So all of this is going in a good direction. I like what I'm seeing. Uh yeah, it's essentially just things that I noticed, which I won't remember in six months. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Since, well, since you're, this is still new. you're only a beginner once, right? Because then, right. then you get used to it. So this is such a vital time to get the feedback from you know folks with fresh eyes. I've just DM'd you a couple of links to the JavaScript thing. Thank you. And the offline, how to get PyScript to work offline, uh, which is something close to my heart because it means I can work on planes. Um, because I refuse to pay $50 for a shonky 56k modem experience. <laughs> so, so you, you're saying, you're saying that, uh, you're only a beginner once, but I already was a beginner, like in doing something similar in PySpeed, but the PySpeed looked differently then. So, you know, okay, yeah. if you're doing version 3.0 at some point, I'm going to be a beginner again. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but, we, no, we, like this, this, the... but, but that's the interesting thing is, is that, um, <sighs> you you're over here with what you know and understand and then there's the new thing over here and we've got to kind of join the dots so you've got the stepping stones to get you there and this is um this is such an important aspect of how do we deal with change you know python 2 to python 3 i mean that yeah. was you know there's not only the technical stuff that had to change because you know python 3000 was a thing for a while and what have you you know we need sure. we, we need to clean up the language but also, well, now, how do you bring, <laughs> how do you bring the community with you? You know, what tools do they need? You know, two to three, all of that sort of stuff. And so, you highlighting this is, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's just what we need to hear. So, you know, just keep, keep it coming, keep it coming. And I think there's trust in in this community, such that you know, when people turn up and go, this doesn't work. It's not like, how dare you? It's kind of, well, tell me more. No, but it's you like, uh, it's 90% there already, like for like what I needed to actually show yeah. people like, look, WebGL with Python. Like, yeah. it's like, it's as advertised. There, there's no trick. Like, actually it does work. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Only like, if I'm pointing people at password.com, like people will go there. Like, yeah. so, you know, we're, we're just tweaking now details so that their experience yeah. is smooth, yeah. essentially. Cool. All right, okay. That's, uh, that's, that, that's it from my end this time around. Cool. Um, well, uh, that that was epic. Um, Fabio's got war and peace now in the uh, <laughs> in the notes, uh, but we'll be looking at that. Um, you know, um, and I think if is there, you know, oh yeah, I am the chair, aren't I? So I better be the chair. Uh, so is there? Are there any questions or comments or things that folks want to say just about what we've just heard, or uh, they feel they need to say before the end of the meeting? Otherwise. I'm looking at the time. Um, I don't want to keep people longer than... I I got something. I just want to echo what uh, was said already. Thank you very much, Wukash, for all the feedback. Uh, I've been uh, in the background, been creating all the tickets and things like that. So we're definitely going to start working on all of that as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. I am 
I am off tomorrow because my mom came over for uh, for Christmas for her birthday. But uh, on Thursday, I'm looking into what the hell is happening with the pay payments. And all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> We, we, we could be missing millions as a result of this, you know. <laughs> just People just never been able to pay us. <laughs> it's good to find out. That's the important thing. Anything else? Otherwise, I'll call it a wrap. No? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording then. Uh, uh...